Raising teenagers is hard. Understatement of the century. This is Mentor Select. Mentor Select. Parenting teens to be successful adults. Mentor Select serves parents who are raising teens. Every week, Derrich interviews leading experts that work with teens, educators, counselors, mentors, and authors to give you practical tips, strategies, and resources that you can incorporate immediately to better connect and understand your teen. All while parenting them to be successful adults, focusing on social and emotional development, something that's left out of the classroom, but not in ours. Be sure to subscribe share and rate this is mentor select and this is your host Derrick phillips welcome to episode 76 of the mentor select podcast i'm so happy that you joined us today and happy new year 2020 wow we made it to another decade that's something to really be excited about and celebrate I'm looking forward to accomplishing a lot in 2020. For those of you who are new to the Mentor Select family, just want to give you a little backstory. The previous 75 episodes were dedicated to providing teenagers with career guidance. However, as I've been working with teenagers, a lot of parents have been reaching out to me over the years asking for advice on how to better connect and really understand their teens so they can guide them to make that transition to adulthood successfully. So that inspired me to refocus the Mentor Select podcast. Now, full disclosure, I do not have a teenager. My daughter, Legacy, is actually six months old now. However, when I was 22 years old, I became my 13-year-old sister's legal guardian, and I raised her until she graduated from high school. And I am proud to say that my sister is a successful adult. So rest assured, I do have firsthand experience parenting a teenager. And over the past decade, I've influenced thousands of teenagers through mentoring, coaching, my books, podcasts, and live training. I truly have a passion for inspiring and empowering teens. I believe it's my life's purpose to serve youth. So now I'm expanding my focus to also serve parents as well because it truly takes a community to successfully raise a teen. So now that you know who I am and what value you will gain by listening to the Mentor Select podcast, let's get to the interview. Parents, you're in for a real treat today. We have the Lancaster ISD Elementary School Teacher of the Year for 2018-2019, Tracy Thompson. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, we're glad to have you. So how are you in this new decade? Well, I'm just excited about the new year, this new decade and everything that it brings. <laughs> so I'm, right. uh, yeah, I'm just excited for what's to come. I mean, certainly lots of opportunities. I'm sure you can continue doing great things, but congratulations on your award. That's a big deal. Tell us more about that. I was so surprised because I work with so many great educators who many of them have been in the game much longer than me. So when I'm I'm sitting there amongst all these esteemed educators and when they unveil and I see my picture up there, I'm like, Oh, that's me You know <laughs> Wow. They're like, Yeah, it's you So I was just I was just thankful for, for the opportunity and the recognition because many educators don't receive that type of recognition. Right. It's certainly a, a big deal. And especially to be surprised at the actual award ceremony. That's, that's cool how they do that. But as you mentioned, a lot of competition, a lot of great educators. But looking back on it, what do you feel about your teaching style that helped you win, that separates you from a lot of other teachers? I think my, my servant leader approach is what I feel like separates me from other educators and my ability to connect with students and parents on a different level. I make sure I form a personal relationship with my students and know their likes or dislikes. And then I I make sure I connect with their parents. And once they're comfortable with me, once I know my students better and they know that I care, then that's when learning is able to take place. So I really feel like, you know, those little things that make it more personable to reach them is what sets me apart from other educators. 
Yeah, I like that. Certainly taking that, that holistic approach because that's part of the focus of this podcast is not only do I directly work with teens, but I also want to work with parents as well because it certainly takes a, a team effort. Like they say, it takes a community to raise a child. And for the parents that's uh, maybe struggling with their teens to connect, yeah, really have just bring in all elements to, from the educators Absolutely. to the parents to the teachers. Indeed. So what are some effective ways that you've used to connect with your students? Well, my first approach is like, I know that I'm a good teacher, but I had to become an even better student. So I just make sure I learn from my students daily, you know, because it's a lot of things that they experience that I just take the time to listen. And so by me taking the time to listen and learn from them as well, you know, I think that they, they like that I allow them to talk. You know, I'm not a sit down and be quiet type teacher. If they have something to say, I take the time to listen. Okay, now let's bring it back. And so now they're more inclined to listen to what I have to say or what it is right. I'm trying to get them to learn. Absolutely. Now, using that in the classroom, do you think that also is just as effective for parents to use at home? As the that mother approach? of two teen girls, I have a freshman <laughs> and a senior. All right. And okay. I know firsthand that it, it definitely transferable from the classroom into home life because children have a voice. They need to be heard. And as parents, we have to make sure that we're listening to them and that we're spending that time just to, you know, just sit and talk with them and see what it is they have to say. And then some of the things they say may be correct or incorrect, but let them get it out. And then we can't correct them from there. Right. Yeah, I love that. And a lot of times I'm contacted by parents of teenagers who are just frustrated. They don't, they don't understand them. They just can't just comprehend why teens do some of the things they do. And I think a big part of that is what you just said as far as listen to them, understand where they're coming from and realize they live in a totally different generation than the parents grew up in. So they're faced with different challenges that possibly parents didn't face or just having different obstacles overcome. Yeah, listening to them and getting a better understanding, then you were kind of more of a, a level playing field versus just saying, do as I say and right. don't ask any questions. <laughs> but it, times have really gotten away from the do as I say. I, right. I look at it more as a partnership. You know, it's mm -hmm. a partnership between myself and my students, my parents, or even my own children. You know, the do as I say is gone. It's a partnership. We have right. to work together. Because the children, they have much more access than we had when we were growing up. Everything right. is instant. It's at the touch of their fingertip on their smart devices, you know, because it's a lot of things that we learned from our friends. But our friends were the people who we saw at school or the people in our neighborhood were asked to. Still local. My students and my children, they have, their friends are, are all over the world. <laughs> Global, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. They, they everywhere. Right. So the influence is much more greater. I totally agree. I was listening to an interview, I believe, where a guy was saying that parents will say, okay, go out and play with your friends. My kids don't have any friends. But in reality, they have friends all around the world. <laughs> their friends are not limited to who's on the block, their neighborhood. They have, yeah, their reach is just unlimited. That's a big difference in previous generations. Now, being a teacher and being that you do allow your students to have a voice and express themselves, I'm sure you hear some venting about this, their, their parents. <laughs> what are some common things you hear as far as kids venting about maybe that their parents don't understand or just, uh, about them? They'll say, I'm tired when I leave school. They just don't understand. And I say, well, <laughs> OK, well, do you think your parents are tired when they leave work? Do they still make sure you eat dinner? They still make sure they take you to football or basketball practice or all these other great things you go to. You know, they don't look at it that way. As children, they only look at it from their point of view. Right. Definitely. <laughs> they tired. <laughs> they don't want to wash dishes. They don't want to <laughs> household chores. <laughs> well, I have to make my bed up if I'm just going to get back in it. <laughs> so... To help them understand. <laughs> I love how you mentioned that it, it, it is a partnership. It's no longer like maybe previous generation where it was a dictatorship. <laughs> it is right. more of a partnership, finding ways to work together and meeting each other's needs. So the kids meeting their needs of the parents and the parents meeting the need of the kids and the educators meeting the needs of both. <laughs> For you as an educator, but why do you feel it is so important to connect with the parents as well? 
Because the parents are the foundation. When the parents know that you have a genuine and love and care for their students, they're more inclined to relax and trust you. Right. There's nothing better than have a parent who wholeheartedly trusts you with their child and know that you have their best interest at heart. Absolutely. Our students and our children, they feed off our parents. You know, if they know that, okay, my mom will know that, you know, if Miss Thompson called, it must mean something. And if <laughs> they know that their parent is all in and the students are going to be all in. You know, I've had the other side, too. If a parent doesn't care for you, the student is going to have that apprehension towards you as well. That's why right. relationship building is so important to me. Yeah, that's the foundation, as you mentioned earlier. Absolutely. Now, you mentioned as far as caring, showing them that you care, whether it's the parent, the student, really showing them that you care and how it builds trust. I totally agree. Outside, other than like really listening to them, allow them to have a voice. What are some other ways to really build those relationships and, and show the students that you care? For example, in my classroom, students, they don't have to bring anything but themselves. Okay. You need pencils? Okay, I have pencils. You need spirals, notebooks, whatever they need is there for them. If they don't have it, no worries, go get it. You need something to take home, take it too. Your little brother, little sister, they need something, cool, get it for them. Mm -hmm. and, now, and that just spans beyond the classroom. Just before we got out for a break, I gifted almost 100 students at my school with coats. Coats, hats, wow. gloves. And it's not just, you know, it wasn't just for students in my class. It was for whoever needed. If I noticed the baby didn't have a coat, hey, come get this coat. You got siblings at home? Okay, if they need coats, hats, gloves, okay, let's get, let's get them home for them too. Send out an email to the other teachers. If you have any students who need coats, hey, send them to me. I, I make sure every student has a coat. And just by just small gestures like that, right? they know. Like I have students who come to me that are not per se my students. I feel like they are my students, but, you know, <laughs> they may not be in my class. If they right. need something, they know that they can come to me for that. Wow. No matter what it is, I've built that, you know, I've, I've built, I've laid the groundwork. And so if it's something that they need, they come to me no matter what it is. Hmm. That is so important, really vital. Because you think about on the other side of that, like for me growing up in the hood where it was the gang members who were, hey, you need this, I got you. You need something, I got you. We're on the negative side. And really kids are going to gravitate to that. So if someone who doesn't have their best interest in mind is making those gestures, giving them things, then that's what they're going to gravitate to. But on the positive side, it's your parents, it's your teachers, mentors, they're the ones showing you, hey, I care for you. Hey, I'm I'm going to take care of your needs. Hey, yeah, and I different... definitely understand that. Like, I grew up in South Dallas, you know. South Dallas. I, right. <laughs> so, and I, I had some amazing teachers who inspired me, and I just wanted to, you know, they were the ones, like, making sure that students were cared for, and we had those things. And so now, I don't know, in the past few years, teachers have gotten, like, a, a bad rep. You know, of all the things you see in the news. And I just want to, I want to dispel all that. No, it's, it's teachers out here who, who care for the students, who genuinely love them. We are not here for the check, as, you know, some may say, because we know the check is not that great. You know, I honestly feel like it's a calling for me. Right. Love it. Love it. So you mentioned with the coat drive, yeah, I saw you some pictures from Facebook. You're doing the coat drive. That was awesome and just really getting people excited to chip in. That's one of your many gifts. <laughs> but also I saw a, a segment on the news where you uh, did another big event. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, <laughs> I was featured on, on Channel 8 News for just being a driving force and assisting with a donation of brand new washing and dryers for my school. So that was school year before last. That particular year, I had the privilege of moving up with my students from fourth grade to fifth grade. So I'd already got to know them. I built relationships with their families. Like I had the same students for two years in a row. And so the best part of moving up with the students was the bond and the, the level of comfort that I had with them, they had with me and their parents. So with that, right. my students, you know, they would begin to confide in me about things that would extend well beyond the classroom. 
And I remember we used to have Wednesday evening tutorials. And, you know, I had a student say, help me clean up. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. And this particular student said, well, I won't be at school tomorrow. And me being the person, I'm like, well, why, why won't you be at school tomorrow? And she just looked and she told me that she didn't have enough clean clothes to wear to school without even thinking. I'm like, okay, what do you mean? And that evening I learned that, you know, the parent hadn't come home. And after going and speaking with the neighbor who was caring for the my student and the three siblings, the parent had went to jail after being out. And, you know, the students didn't have clean clothes. So that night I, I actually had some awesome teachers who pitched in and we got them clothes that they needed for the night. And the student began bringing me the clothes in the backpack. I don't live far from my school. I would take them home, put them in the washer, go back on my plan up here, put them in the dryer, go back, you know, and bring them back the next day, fold it, ready. And so once my principal learned of my doing, she notified the district's truancy coordinator who applied for a grant from the Metroplex Association of Realtors. And okay. the group awarded my school district with funds and they were able to purchase washer and dryer after hearing the story. So now we have brand new washer and dryers. And to this day, you know, I continue to not, not just myself, myself along with other teachers, we wash clothes for students and whatever they need, we are able to take care of it. And I was able to partner with other nonprofit organizations and they, where they donated, they've been donating detergent for me for the past two years. Get the wow. hands, open heart. They come back each year. First year they brought me maybe uh, close to a hundred bottles of detergent. This year they came back and brought me even more. And so I'm just thankful that, you know, the task didn't go unnoticed. Right. Wow. That's an amazing story. And what really hit me about the story is how when the student told you, hey, I won't be back tomorrow. Unfortunately, a lot of teachers are just left at that. Like what we said, oh, all right. <laughs> but you been have already having that connection with the students, building those yeah. relationships. But I think it was a level of comfort. Right. So she felt comfortable confiding in you, which probably other teachers she wouldn't have. And they wouldn't know what was going on. She would have just been out of school. Like, oh, well. And I think for parents, that's something where a lot of parents struggle with as far as building that comfort where their kids do feel comfortable confiding in them. Do you have some more tips as far as what parents can do to make their teens feel more comfortable confiding in them? Yeah. So what I like to do is have some no phone time. I'm glued to devices. We all are glued to devices. Even my four-year-old has his device. But <laughs> Start early. <laughs> each, each day, have at least one hour where you're doing something together. No devices, no phones, no like talking to each other. You know, helping with a task, doing something together as a family. Just create that time where it's just you and them. And then if you have multiple children, like I have three children, I make sure I spend time with them individually. Okay. When you spend time with your children individually, they may open up to you about something they may not want to talk about in front of their little sister, their little brother. Ah, uh -huh. okay. So to me, it's just all about like, spending time and having conversations because I know my daughter, she was knowledgeable about so many things. I would have never even known if I just hadn't taken the time to sit and talk to her. Right. Wow. That's really important. Speaking of like having teenagers, what are some challenges that they're dealing with in high school? Just generally speaking that, that teenagers are dealing with in high school that maybe yeah. parents are not even aware of. Well, I know the the biggest thing is social media bullying. They call it exposing. Like if somebody doesn't like you, they'll put a picture of you up or say something about you. People are sharing it or they air dropping it to other wow. students in the school or they're recording you where you may not be looking your best that day. Just anything. They record it. They're just putting it out there. So most of the challenges I see these days with teenagers are social media based. Okay. It's the cyberbullying. Right. And that's some that's a new concept for us. Didn't grow up in this generation <laughs> where we didn't have that. We had the face to face bullying, but cyberbullying, that's a whole nother level. They can record you or unflattering picture or video that can end up going viral and millions of people can see it. That's just something I'm sure right. a lot of parents can't even, even fathom the impact, how much stress kids must be under dealing with that. Yeah. Wow. And that's why it's so important that we make sure our children know 
our teens know, hey, don't post that video. Don't record yourself doing that because you never know where you may be in 10 years from now, five years from now. Right. These videos, they'll come back to hunt you. <laughs> oh yeah, you know Absolutely. back in the day we didn't have we didn't have that to worry about. I had a little people, <laughs> no. and if you had voicemail, <laughs> you was really it. If you had voicemail, right? You advanced. You are doing it? <laughs> yeah, but but these are all new things, and I mean, just the nature of the beast. Right. And we just have to really educate our children and let them know that that's not the right thing to do, and just get them involved in things have to have some things that they're involved in make sure they're volunteering make sure they're learning about giving back educating the whole child right can you elaborate more on that what you mean by educating the whole child i'm just not speaking about academically i'm talking about how they feel about themselves uh, right. how they feel about others teaching them about compassion and caring for others you know letting them know nobody's perfect and that's okay you know, everybody won't like you and that's okay. You, But as long as you respect one another. Yeah, totally agree. And that's the biggest focus of this podcast is that development outside of the classroom, outside of the academics, that social development, that emotional development. That's a major part of any human being. So you can't neglect those areas as parents, as educators. It's really important. Also, as I work with teens, a lot of things I know they struggle with, which is related to social media, is comparing themselves to other people, just comparing themselves, maybe celebrities or wanting to get a million views or things like How do you handle those issues? Well, to me, that goes back to the whole self-esteem. Like, I know that when I was, when I was younger, you know, my grandmother taught me that you are not who they say you are. You know, mm -hmm. I've been 5'10 since I was probably in the sixth grade. So <laughs> I was always bigger than everybody, the boys and the girls. So I would have kids, they would talk about me and laugh at me and bully me. But I had high self-esteem within myself because I learned it was taught at home. They could call me whatever they want, but I knew that wasn't who I was. And I can't even imagine right. going through that and having social media to add to it. So we just have to pour into our children and our teens and let them know that, Hey, that's not real. Anybody can post a, get a good angle and post the almost perfect picture, but that doesn't right. mean that they're happy. You know, what, what yeah. is happy? That doesn't mean that they believe in themselves. Right. Views is just that. What do likes equate? That's nothing. Yeah. It's no substance there. Absolutely. But I, yeah, I love that quote. You're not who they say you are. Wow. That, yeah, it's very important. Everyone's not going to like you. You're not going to connect with everyone. That's just reality. Yeah, and, that's, and it's are. okay. And it's okay for them not to like you because as long as you like you, as long as you know who you are and what you stand for. Yep. That's so important for people of any age to really understand that and you know, value who they are. Wow. And you miss a lot of good stuff, Tracy. What I love most with the parents, you're giving them just practical things that they can do starting today. <laughs> it's never too late. Starting immediately. They can actually right. incorporate it's, it's it never into their parents now. Never. Now, you mentioned being from South Dallas, and you still work in South Dallas area as far as the schools. What do you think about when like schools are labeled as like, disadvantaged or teens or kids that are given those labels? How do you deal with that? The labels, they come from household income, so to speak. Right. Whereas I do work in a low socioeconomical area, my students perform because our kids don't know that that's what they're labeled as. They don't know that they're supposedly at a disadvantage. I don't even play into the labels because all students can and will learn. You know, right now, the campus that I, I'm at, we're, we're labeled. However, we're at a B rating according to the state. And this year we'll be wow. moving to an A rating because we were almost at an A rating. We we're a few points off. So awesome. I don't even play into those labels. I work hard as well as like I work with some amazing educators at my school and we all work hard for the students. We meet them where they are. We grow them. We pour into them and let them know that, you know, they can be whatever they want to be. And just the growth that we have on my campus and with my students and them, just amazing. So we don't wow. even, we don't care about those labels. They can label on because they're going to have to put a new label on it when we beat that one. <laughs> love it yeah so there's some advantages to being an underdog <laughs> people they underestimate you but hey i can show you absolutely yeah like you say by performing it as you mentioned all students can learn if given the right resources and people that care yes the sky's the limit 
totally agree. Well, you all are a shining example of that. Definitely. Right. Have you given us a lot of just strategies that parents can incorporate to better connect with their kids, to build that trust, to build those relationships. Now, also, I know you see on the other side of it where maybe kids are not performing and it may be related to the relationship they have with their parents. So tell us something that's there's an extra bonus, like something that's not working as far as it maybe you see parents doing that isn't building that trust. Yet. Just being a non-existent parent. Like, okay. you know, some parents I've never even met them before. Like, parents, right. please check in with your kids' schools. Show your face. Right. You know, stop by and for lunch here or there. Show them that you care. Hey, my, my teenager, I have a senior, and I get on her nerves because I still <laughs> show up at her school. You know, a lot right. of times in the lower grades, that's when you get all the parents. But when our children get in the higher grades, that's when they need us the most. Yep. Show your face at the school. If they're having something, stop by. If you can't stay the whole time, just stay for what and you know, be there. Just make sure you go by. Show them that you care. Yep. If they're doing homework, if even if your child say, Oh, I got it, just sit with them. Well, let me see what you're doing. Right. Engage them in conversations. You should know your students' teachers' names. You should know their names. Yeah. And when you see their teachers out, you should be able to know who they are. I just want parents to just be more involved with their students. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, everybody's busy and working, but let's just make that time. Yeah. Yeah, we make time for what's important to us. Right. And then uh, another thing is, you know, the parents that just, if you know your student has a deficiency in something, don't come fuss at the teacher about, oh, you failed my baby. No, (laughs) ma'am. I didn't fail your baby. There's some deficiencies that I like to work with little Johnny with so we can help right. him to grow so that he can, you know, get a better grade. But no, I'm not here to fail anybody. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're talking to your child, not picking on them. <laughs> teachers, yeah, come, come to him with an open mind. Come to, to help, to seek to understand, not to just cut them down. Partnership. Right. Definitely a partnership. It goes back to the very first thing I said, it's a partnership. <laughs> you know, don't just buy your kid everything and just close them in the room so they don't bother you. That's the worst <laughs> thing you can do. Right. The material things don't replace the time. Because there's somebody on that internet that's teaching them something and guaranteed it's mm-hmm. probably something you wouldn't want them to know. Uh, <laughs> I love that. So true. Yeah, whether you're going to have the influence or you want somebody else to have the influence, it's your choice. <laughs> that's definitely great, great advice. Well, Tracy, thanks for giving us so much great advice. I'm sure hopefully the parents that's listening, they're not already doing it. They start doing it. But if any parents want to reach out to you, what would be the best contact for you? And they can contact me at Instagram. Everybody loves Tracy. That's Tracy with an I. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook, Tracy Thompson. Uh, they can inbox me, message me, and I'll get back with them. All right. Well, fantastic. I can't thank you enough. And congratulations again on winning Teacher of the Year. I'm sure you have many more accolades coming your way. Yeah, and also before I go, let me provide you with a few organizations that parents, if they're looking for some extra resources for their students. Yes, definitely. If they can, you know, so the first one is, it's called the Illustrious Angels Youth and Family Services. They can be found on social media. Their founder is Tiffany Mason Wilkerson, Family Tree Counseling. They provide resources. The, the head counselor there is Cheryl Hamilton. Um, there's okay. also a group called Hamilton Guy uh, Counseling Training Group. They provide services for children and families. And then on the other end of the spectrum is Mini Food Pantry located in Plano, Aldo, the MLK Center. They have fresh food giveaways every Wednesday and Saturdays. And you can go by and get food that don't require anything or if you're looking for a volunteer opportunity you can always contact them and go and volunteer and then one of my favorite organizations is helping hands open hearts okay they provide a variety of resources from families any and everything they help you can find them on social media as well Wow, you have a wealth of resources. That's <laughs> an extra, extra bonus. We love it. We love it. And since you brought that up, before I let you go, for parents, what are some indicators where they should start considering counseling for their teens? You'll see your students, your teenager withdraw. Okay. They don't want to talk. You may notice a change in their dress. 
you'll notice a change. Like some kids, they want to wear the hoodies and cover up and kind of sit to the side, like almost trying to make themselves not be seen. So, you know, not want to engage in anything with the family. Do not want to go to school. That's a big one. Not want to go to school. Okay. okay? It's a reason they don't want to go to school. Right. So, and I, all those things that we can find out by having effective communication with them. Yeah, comes right back to that communication. Uh, trust and absolute communication, absolutely. And as I mentioned, I just love your approach where you don't just stop at that surface level. You're always digging deeper. Hey, what is the root? What is the cause versus just the, what the yeah. student is ex- expressing? I just know that I'm my best when I'm helping others see and become their best. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's no better feeling. Like, it literally gives me butterflies. You know, <laughs> I, I just feel that God has given me a unique gift to help individuals uncover the leader and the potential within them and just to tap into their purpose. And that's just why I'm here. Absolutely. Yeah, certainly walking in your purpose. Like you said, it's your calling. So wow, keep doing that. And I hope my daughter is six months now, but I hope by the time she gets into school, we have educators like yourself. <laughs> oh yeah, I know she will. Well, thanks again, Tracy. It's been an absolute pleasure to you know your story more and just learning all of the great strategies that you've learned over the years from teaching and also being a parent of teenagers yourself. So we really appreciate you and hope you have a great rest of the school year. All right. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Wow. The interview was amazing with Tracy Thompson. Really want to thank her. I want to quickly recap some of the tips and strategies that she shared. One that I love the most is she called educating the whole child. And I'll twist it a little bit and say parenting the whole child. So parents keep in mind that it's not just about academics. You also have to help to develop socially and emotionally. That is just as important to help your teens develop into well-rounded, successful adults. So some practical strategies you can incorporate today is taking time to really communicate with your teens. Let them have a voice, hear them out. Don't just automatically shut them down if they say something that you don't like. As Tracy mentioned, the more you show them that you care, the more you're going to build that trust. And they're going to be more willing to confide in you. So dedicate time where there's no electronics and you're just sitting, doing activities together, talking, just having a good time, enjoying each other's presence, minus any distraction. Thanks for listening. I hope you got a lot of value from this episode. Be sure if you have any questions or comments, directly email them to me at Derich at MentorSelect.com. I look forward to hearing from you. And remember, it takes a community to successfully raise a team. You've been listening to Mentor Select. Mentor Select. Parenting teens to be successful adults. Hosted by Dare Rich Phillips. Raising teenagers is hard. Understatement of the century. We get it. That's why Dare Rich interviews leading experts that work with teens, educators, counselors, mentors, and authors to give you practical tips strategies and resources that you can incorporate immediately to better connect and understand your team. That's why we do the show. Be sure to share Mentor Select with other parents of teens. Follow us on social media at Mentor Select to stay up to date on the latest tips, strategies, and resources for parenting teens. Send your questions and comments to Derrich at MentorSelect.com. Tune in every Wednesday for new episodes. Till next time, this is Mentor Select.